Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... Charming as you are, you're not very competent. Fucking hell. No, fuck. ...to dodgy decor... There should be a law against pink towels. Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. It's absolutely filthy. Or her quest for perfection. That is a campaign, definitely. That, that is, is personal. Wake up, hello. Yeah. Hotel is personal, but this is a business. This week, the hotel inspector sees red. Well, welcome to the knocking shop. I feel like I'm in someone's womb. I think anybody criticising what you've chosen is always going to be a tricky one. The red ceiling, it's like walking in a cave. I'm not meaning to be insulting, but... When's she um, going to be? I honestly think every ceiling should be white. Oh, my God. I honestly think there should be a few less cushions. I'm not going to be bullied on the cushion front. Why are you supposed to put them behind your head, you twat? And I'm not doing it. I understand your argument. I'm just telling you on this one thing you're wrong. Windsor's Hotel, an unrated six-bedroom B&B in Chertsey, Surrey. Good afternoon, Windsor's. Former airline trolley dolly Melanie White opened the property as a wine bar in 1989. Funny how wine's coming in and out of fashion. It used to be Chardonnay, then it was Pinot Grigio. Now Pinot Grigio is really naff. Ten years later, she added the guest rooms, personally decorating them all in her own unique style. It's silky. Yeah, yeah. It's soft and squidgy. I absolutely loved doing the rooms up. I was determined that each one was going to be completely different. It is very much an expression of what I like. Although business originally boomed, a decade later, it's a very different story. The bookings just really dropped. It just went like that, like a stone. Of one week, we had like three room nights booked, which is just scary monsters. That's thirty-seven thousand pounds down just on the rooms. It's tragic, beyond belief. I just really would love to get into a situation where I didn't wake up every morning petrified if I can pay a bill. Probably cost me about twenty quid every time someone stays here at the moment. Probably more actually. 25% occupancy rates have meant staff cuts, forcing a jaded Mel to get her immaculately manicured hands dirty. Well, the old stress levels have gone through the roof. I, I don't miss the booking. I'm sitting on the loo, I'm taking it, you know, it's literally anywhere. It'll be £99, including breakfast and VAT. For Mel, running Windsor's has become a chore. Bloody That's guests, take your shoes off, stop messing yeah. it up. I know, I couldn't agree more. Especially when dealing with her frequently dissatisfied guests. I really hate it when people complain. Small northern men, bulls particularly, are very difficult. Sorry, one second. It's something I take to you personally. I think they're sort of criticising me. Sorry, can we speak up a bit? Hello? I'm always the person that gets the six foot six, 20 stone American. You know, I just, I won't do it. I just, I just won't shake them in. Get out of the word of that. At the end of her tether, Mel has sent an SOS to award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi. Look, it's there, but it would be very easy to drive past. I think you'd be quite shocked if you arrived there and you realised that that's where you'd book to stay. But is it already too late to rescue this damsel in distress? I mean, I've sold my car over and mortgaged my flat. There's not much else I can put into it, really. Despite only having six rooms, Mel markets Windsor's as a hotel. 
It's taken me about three passes in the car to finally spot where Windsor's stands because it certainly doesn't look like a hotel. Now I'm up close, I can read that it says Hotel Bistro Bar and Cafe, but as I was driving past, it looked like a wine bar with possibly some flats above. And there's a poster on the window saying Nails and Cocktails Ladies' Night. Now, if I was a businessman arriving and I saw that, I would get very nervous. Mel. Oh, hi, Alex. Alex, Polizzi. Hi, lovely to meet you. So, walking past, quite easy to miss. You've got quite a small frontage and it's dark and you don't have one of those arms that kind of say Windsor's. No. Um, it's not particularly noticeable, so that's definitely something we're going to have to tackle. To get to the root of the B&B's problems, Alex will stay the night. Mel has booked her into the aptly named Green Room, a double priced at £100 per night. So this is the green room, I take it? Uh, yep, it is. Very artistic headboard. Mm, yep, that's, um, that was my own design, actually. And, um, yeah, it should be really comfy. OK, that's lovely. Thank you so much. So, first impressions about the room decor. There's an awful lot of decoration for a very small room. Swag curtains, lots of cushions. Where do you put them in such a small room when you actually go to bed? And I'm not sure that I really approve of this. Certainly not a room where you want any couple activity. Like many guests before her, Alex is underwhelmed. This isn't a hotel. It shouldn't pretend to be a hotel. It doesn't have room information. It doesn't have a phone. Basically, it's a let room. And she ought to make that clear so that people, when they arrive here, know what they're getting. And things don't get any better as Alex moves on through the rest of the rainbow. Oh, dear. The room is painted eye-watering orange, not aided by the fact that the ceiling is painted in two. I'm not quite sure what these cushions are for. What does one actually do with them? There's a kind of leopard print bedspread and these very dark drapes, which I loathe. We also have some pretty unappealing desiccated fruit here. And... God, I'm so glad I'm not staying in this room. So far, it's more Bet Lynch than Boutique. Next, the Red Room. Well, welcome to the knocking shop. It looks very pink and red, and there's a very nasty stain, which really puts me off. In fact, everything is just a little bit grimy. The attention to detail is definitely lacking. I mean, look at how filthy that light is. And this is something that Mel is ignoring at her peril. Last to be inspected, the blue room. Well, what can I say about this room except it's pretty small? But I can imagine a six foot six American would have quite a lot to say if you were shown into this room. Once again, this looks very tired. It really needs redecorating. The attention to detail is not great. Look at this. Look at the grouting around the bath. It's really manky. This is a bathroom that's small but far from perfectly formed. Now Alex has seen the damage for herself, she wants to dig a little deeper into what's causing it. Why did you get into this industry? I've never worked in an office, never could. It was just an opportunity to do something a bit different. I'm, I'm not meaning to be insulting, but... I mean, she's um, going to be. I wouldn't think of you as a natural hotelier. Would you disagree with that? Mm. No, I don't think I'd disagree with that, actually. <laughs> when it's working well, it, it you know, enables me to go to the gym and blah, 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 yeah. all those things. But it's now becoming like taking over everything. Like, this week I've been here every day. Yeah. And and it gets to that point, you think, actually, is it really worth it? How bad are things now? I mean, how long do you think you can keep on going unless the situation improves? It can't carry on like this, that's for sure. So rooms are down almost 70%? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
With time in short supply, Alex has already identified what she thinks is a deep-seated problem. Okay, so there's a few things that interest me here. I mean, it wouldn't seem obvious to me that this was somewhere that business people would stay. I think you're making a mistake by advertising yourself as a hotel because, in my opinion, this isn't a hotel. This is a wine bar stroke bistro with rooms. Right. That's really bad. I think if you're saying that you're a hotel, then your expectations are much higher and you're more likely to be at least initially disappointed. Calling yourself a guest house or guest accommodation might do you a few more favours. Alex thinks calling Windsor's a hotel can only lead to disappointment for the guests. But Mel seems less than impressed with her advice. Hotel is a key word for actually somewhere to stay. So somebody in Japan or Russia, guest house, means nothing. Windsor's guesthouse.com. I don't know. Mel's reluctant to drop the hotel moniker. So how will she cope when Alex calls her taste into question? I hate the ceiling being painted in the same colour as the walls. I hate the hotel sign there. Everything's a bit dingy. She's really lost that loving feeling about her own place. Anybody would. 20 years doing the same job? I think so. Don't you? Melanie White is the owner of Windsor's, a struggling six-bedroom wine bar come b and in Chertsey. I put so much of myself into it, which just break my heart just to see it go. In desperation, she's turned to expert hotelier Alex Polizzi. If somebody who's an expert in the field can't see a possibility of us improving our trade, then I might as well put the for sale sign up outside. So far, Alex has discovered overpowering decor. Oh dear. And run down furnishings. Certainly not a room where you want any couple activity. And she's decided the Windsor's hotel tag is a misnomer, responsible for many a guest's disappointment. In my opinion, this isn't a hotel. This is a wine bar stroke bistro with rooms. After a night's sleep, Alex is waking up, feeling blue in the green room. I hate the ceiling being painted in the same colour as the walls. It makes you feel like you're sleeping in a box. It's pretty oppressive. And the decorative order needs some attention. This, for example, which I think is unacceptably tatty for a room that costs £100 a night. Next on the agenda, breakfast. A pivotal offering in any guest house. But Mel is not a morning girl. The thing I dread the most is having to get into the kitchen. I was actually doing the cooking the other day, I couldn't believe it. I'm not doing that again. As she won't do it herself, breakfast is cooked by Mel's loyal housekeeper, Janice. Hello, Alex. Nice Hi. to meet you. Lovely to meet would you. Would you like some cereals? Um, no, I won't, please, but I would love some coffee. All right. I get you some orange juice first, Thank yeah? Thank you very much. Oh, she's having a uh, scrambled egg, bacon, sausages. I find this a rather disconcertingly dark room to have breakfast in. Everything looks a bit grimy. I'd love just to take everything off it and give it a really good clean and paint this bloody ceiling white too. I feel like I'm in someone's womb. And that looks lovely. Thank you. The breakfast of champions. <laughs> thank you very much. Enjoy your breakfast. I will, thank, thank you. you. Scrambled eggs are perfect. Mmm. It's good. The breakfast may be acceptable, but the room it's served in has left her cold. It feels slightly seedy. It feels slightly unclean. The hotel inspector is ready to deliver her critique of the B&B. And Mel is already on the defensive. I go along with everything I can do, but if she's just something really, really well, I think it's ridiculous, and I'm not doing it. Alex's first concern, that underwhelming first impression. I want you to look at the outside of your establishment and see what it says. It doesn't look like a high-classy joint, does it? Looking at that. Mm -hmm. 
to my mind, having those posters in the windows isn't particularly warming or reassuring for someone who's arriving to stay as a business traveller. This A board that's here, luxury ensuite accommodation, it doesn't exactly look very upmarket. I hate the hotel sign there. I'm not mad about the hanging baskets with the dead flowers. And we need to make you stand out more to make people really know that you're here. So even in passing, they're aware of the fact that you have rooms to sell. Under fire, Mel is biting her lip. But there's worse to come. Next, the decor. I have to say, I thought last night this room looked absolutely beautiful. It looks amazing by candlelight. But during the day, you wouldn't wander past and think, uh huh, this is where I'd like to come and have breakfast. It looked slightly seedy. I think you unnecessarily darken the place and make it less inviting than it should be because of your red ceiling. It's like walking in a cave. If you want your rooms to work, you have to give your customers more. It's not a hotel, as we keep saying, but this is the place where they could come and sit and where they could use. I agree with most of that. Excellent. Forward. The final issue Alex wants Mel to confront involves her pride and joy, the bedrooms, last decorated ten years ago. You say that they've all held up quite well and they're not looking too tired. Well, I frankly disagree. Look at that light and how dirty that light is. Look at that great big stain. I don't know quite what that's due to, but um, I would find that slightly unappealing in a bedroom, yeah? I certainly agree with that, yeah. Um, one of the things that really annoyed me was that there were so many cushions on the bed, and this is quite a small room. And I personally find your obsession with painting in the ceiling the same <laughs> colour as the walls really bizarre. There are some things that you have to tackle if you're going to want to get your business back. Get rid of those horrible things there, oh. which was quite ornamental eight <laughs> years ago, which is now not so ornamental. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to throw them in the bin, which is excellent, unless anyone wants a banana or something. Is there anything that you disagree with? Probably you disagree with me about the ceiling colour, but, I mean, that isn't the end of the world. Well, I, I, I do and I don't. I was going for, like, the idea that if it's a red room, it's like a red room, and actually there's nothing nice about this ceiling, so why pick it out? Please don't take this as an insult, but this room, to me, kind of smacks rather of bordello chic. Alex believes that to save Windsor's, Mel must tackle three key areas. Firstly, to avoid disappointing guests, Mel must immediately stop selling Windsor's as a hotel and rebrand it as guest accommodation. Guests now have much higher expectations than they did even 10 years ago. You don't really want to get people here under false pretenses. You want them to come and be happy that they're here from the moment that they walk through that door. Secondly, Alex wants Mel to deal with the dodgy decor. The untidy frontage needs a facelift and the overpowering bedrooms need toning down. Thirdly, a jaded Mel needs a serious change of attitude both to her guests and her business. You're now pretty downhearted and a bit annoyed. You have to be here so much. And finding that enthusiasm to tackle everything again is quite hard, but ultimately it is up to you. I need to kind of get sort of like, not enthusiasm, a new, more positive approach to it, either that or I don't do it anymore and let somebody else take over. I think you have to remove yourself from the last 20 years of hard work and success. And this is your business, this is your baby. You know, if it's going to be a success, it's on your shoulders that it will stand or fall. Yep, absolutely right. My responsibility, nobody else is. Excellent. Got it. Yeah, no one else is going to take the shit, are they? I suppose what I feel about Mel and about Windsor's is she's really lost that loving feeling about her own place. As always in these small hotels, the devil is in the detail, and the detail really does need some attention. I think anybody criticising what you've chosen as your particular sort of taste in decorating is always going to be a tricky one. Yeah, I probably have lost some enthusiasm. Anybody would. 20 years doing the same job? I think so. Don't you? A few days later, 
and Mel has enlisted the help of her husband, Pete, to conduct an experiment. Mel wants him to play the role of a businessman who's booked into Windsor's for the first time. Alex wants me to try out the breakfast, because normally I, I don't do breakfast. Breakfast is for wimps. This morning I dragged, dragged, right, for my husband in for breakfast. The Windsor's proximity to the M25 means that many of Mel's guests are businessmen. What are you going to have for breakfast then? As a seasoned business traveller himself, Pete will give her a much needed corporate perspective. So, what do you think about the room then? I think the colours work well in the evening. I don't know about during the day. It looks, to be frank, shabby. I'm not repainting it. Right. So I like this colour. You know, I'm just saying. That's, that's what I think. Mm. Windsor's is a total expression of Mel. Nobody likes criticism, even if it's uh, you know, well meant. The colour of the bar, I'm not sure. How to be a really good nighttime place and a really good daytime place, I'm not sure how we can do that. Mel also wants a businessman's point of view on the guest rooms. First impressions? I personally don't like these things. Why not? Because. When you get in the bed, they always sit on your feet. Why are you supposed to put them behind your head, you twat? My husband is very anti-cushion, as are most men. Too many cushions. Too many cushions. Too many cushions spoil the broth, right? Too many okay. cushions. Every room she has has damn cushions in it. Obviously, whoever's staying here has the same attitude to cushions that I have. Mm-hmm. Because you notice they're just piled on the floor. It's a stupid place to put the cushions, isn't it? Yeah, but... Why have them in the... F I'm just saying, that's For my... decorative view. purposes. OK. <clears throat> I'm standing up cushions, rights and bolsters. Every good bed has a bolster and a cushion. Or five. Six, maybe. It seems Mel's reluctant to budge on her distinctive style. But how will she like it when Alex rings the changes? Oh, my God. Actually, I really don't like it. Not having this. No. I understand your argument. I'm just telling you on this one thing, you're wrong. Former air hostess Melanie White runs the struggling Windsor's Hotel and Wine Bar in Chertsey. Okay, and... Another one of those. And another one of those. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy, isn't it? Super. With occupancy rates at rock bottom, she sent an SOS to award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi. Alex has encountered overpowering decor. I feel like I'm in someone's room. I hate the ceiling being painted in the same colour as the walls. A jaded owner. Yeah, I probably have lost some enthusiasm. Anybody would. 20 years doing the same job? I think so. And she thinks that by advertising the six bedroom B&B &B as a hotel, Mel is crushing guests' high expectations from the moment they arrive. As I was driving past, it looked like a wine bar with possibly some flats above. It certainly doesn't look like a hotel. But she's failed to convince Mel, who's reluctant to give up the hotel moniker for fear that it will cost her custom. Hotel is a key word for actually somewhere to stay. Guest house means nothing. Five weeks later, Alex is back with a plan to get her point across. She's hitting the streets with Mel, armed with a questionnaire designed to find out what guests expect when they book a hotel rather than guest accommodation. So let's see if we can find any likely looking business types. Excuse me, um, if you booked online and you weren't yeah. expecting, you didn't have an image of an outside, do any of these particularly look like the hotel, kind of hotels you'd expect to be staying in? That looks a bit more like a, a cafe than a, than a hotel. I wouldn't be impressed by that one. That's unimpressive. Yeah. Oh. Which one would you prefer to be this arriving one. at? Right, fine. <laughs> right, that's because you've got to nuke the front of the building. <laughs> so, no, I wouldn't go for that. Sure. Okay. It's clear that Windsor's is anything but what people think of as a hotel. How important is a room with individual character? Um, on a business trip, not really. Which sort of style would you prefer? The first one. The first one, yeah. Which oh. one would you go for? Oh, it would obviously be the, the, the one in your upper picture, yeah. How did that go? People have got seriously poor taste in choosing their rooms. <laughs> and so to the moment of truth. 
Will Mel, as she believes, lose business if she drops the hotel tag and rebrands herself as guest accommodation? Is it important that you stay in a hotel rather than guest accommodation? It doesn't make any difference, really. Not at all? Okay. Me personally, it's not actually that important. Oh, right, that's interesting. Thank you. With her point made, Alex sits Mel down in a nearby bar to discuss the need to get a rating, but not as a hotel. I think that you're mismanaging the expectation of your guest by calling yourself a hotel. And if you're ashamed or worried about checking people in because you're worried when they arrive that they're going to be slightly downhearted, and I think you have to accept that you're doing something wrong. But a few people arrive and they were sort of so sort of huffy about the place that it sort of knocked my confidence. I think it would be very beneficial for you to be rated officially and to have, therefore, some kind of official status. You can then welcome people into the place with real pride. Actually, after today, I, I, I agree because that the vast majority of people, it didn't matter to them either way. In fact, a couple of people did say that they'd almost prefer sort of like, you know, a good sort of guest accommodation. A good B&B. A high guest accommodation rating will address the dismal 25% occupancy and by giving her something to be proud of, force a change in Mel's churlish attitude. But if she's to maintain her prices, anything less than four stars could be disastrous. As my contribution to this, I would like to update the bar a bit because I think it's very important that people walk in somewhere and it's immediately appealing. Uh -huh. So I would like to ask you to tackle the rooms. I honestly think every ceiling should be white. I honestly think there should be a few less cushions. And I don't want you to spend lots of money. I just want you to do the few things that we know that need doing. That sounds great to me and I'd be really <laughs> pleased to get to that point. I don't have to try and be a hotel anymore. I can actually be a really good like, guest house. Yeah. Which would be so much better. The day has been a revelation for Mel, and back at Windsor's, she's feeling re-energised. I think after today, I feel that I just want to get out there and just have a, a good sort of, I don't know, new look at the whole thing, to sort of get in there and do it, and stop just going, oh God, it's like, yeah, so it's been brilliant. Having spoken to people on the street today, they prefer the boring room, I prefer the slightly more exotic room. So I guess what I could always do a compromise and then people can choose which sort of room they like, boring or interesting. Are you boring Northern Gate or you're an interesting person? Oh, you have an interesting room then. With Mel seemingly fully on board with the rebranding of Windsor's as guest accommodation, Alex's team can set to work. The confused frontage will be given a new lease of life and the decor in the guest rooms will be toned down starting with painting the ceilings white. The bar is also getting a facelift. The new scheme retains Mel's beloved red, but by lightening the walls and repainting the ceiling, Alex is hoping to make the room more inviting, day and night. Although Mel was initially enthusiastic about Alex's changes, her newfound optimism is short-lived. For the first time, I'm actually starting to wonder whether she's got it right. I really didn't like it. So, I mean, you obviously know a bit more about what you're doing here than I do. Don't you think it looks a bit sort of antiseptic? I think it looks good. I do think you? it's a fantastic paint job. You like the uh, rather unpleasant, sort of grey, sort of hospital, psychiatric unit, prison wall colour, do yeah, you? Yeah, well, I like it, yeah. You do? Hmm. I think I might get you in a couple of weeks later and paint it red again, so I'm okay, not having this. No, change it back. I realise we do need to do something to make it different. I just don't know whether we're going in the right direction at the moment, that's all. If Mel is unsure about the alterations to her wine bar, how will she feel about Alex's white ceiling upstairs? Oh, my God. Hmm. I think one of the things about Windsor's, I, 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 you know, I had a sort of like a, a very kind of clear idea of how I wanted the place to look and kind of I suppose it's a bit of an extension of me in some ways. So maybe this just um, takes a bit away from me, I guess, really. I just don't want to be boring and dull. And if other people want to be boring and dull, they can go and be boring and dull somewhere else. 
And it's not just the ceiling that Mel's having second thoughts about. To cushion or not to cushion, that is the question. I mean, I'm still a cushion person. I'm not going to say I'm not. It's just I like sitting on the bed watching telly with loads of cushions. Well, maybe some people don't. Maybe some people like to sleep on a bed of nails. Who knows? I'm not putting one of those in here. The best approach is, is to sort of, you know, kind of either get some, some therapy if that's required to, or um, wean yourself off gradually. Hmm. It seems the idea of toning down her extravagant decor is too much for her to bear. So no, dull, dull, dull. That's what I think of this. A few weeks later, and with the work complete, Alex is back in town to see the changes for herself. It looks so much better. First of all, just having the name without writing on either side makes it much more visible. There's an elbow sign that says very clearly what it does, bistro and rooms, so there can be no confusion at all. The curtains are pulled right back, so now you can see in, and it becomes much more welcoming. The exterior no longer confuses arriving guests. It's now a much classier affair. Hello. Oh, Alex, how hi. are you? Fine, thank you. How this are you? This looks fabulous. The bar has gone from dark red womb of gloom to a bright and welcoming space that works both day and night. The stifling red ceiling is lost replaced with a softer off-white, throwing a whole new light on the subject. From outside, it looks like a very smart, clean look, somewhere that would really tempt you in. It all just looks much more this century. Two weeks ago, Mel was sceptical about Alex's new colour scheme. But now the work is complete, does she feel the same? It took me a couple of days to get used to it, but no, I love it. So well done. Thank you very much. Success. A success tick. Mal has come round to the new bar. But there's still the thorny issue of the white ceilings in the bedrooms. I know you weren't entirely convinced of that, were you? I don't know, it's kind of... I just think that it maybe just makes the room look a bit more bland than, than it did before, but... Trust me, darling, even if it's only on this, you have to go on blind faith alone. My idea is to do, paint them all the same colour was the fact that there will be no change between the walls and the ceiling. I understand your argument. I'm just telling you on this one thing you're wrong. Although I might not be right, I don't yeah. think I'm wrong either. Okay. I think it's just a matter of, of personal opinion. I'll tell you what, I'll swap you the cushions for white ceilings. So we'll do the white ceilings and we'll keep the cushions. Cushions, yeah? Deal. Deal? Yeah. OK, well, now I want to warn you, you know, we have decided to go down the rating route, so your quality and tourism inspector could come at any time, so stay on your toes. Right, OK. A high rating is essential to Alex's plan, but it's a risky strategy. Anything less than four stars could do more harm than good. If Windsor's is going to make the grade, there's work to be done. Right, so here I've got the guest accommodation minimum entry requirements, which tells me all the things we've got to do. Some evidence of attention to detail, particularly high and low level dusting. All oh, right, yes, OK, I think we've got a, ha got a handle on that now. I think we're there on the cleanliness side. Yeah, yeah. I think we're definitely there. Excellent first and last impression. Well, we're working on that. Judgment Day. Tonight, the assessor has anonymously booked in. But will Mel's guest phobia be her undoing? Fortunately, the assessor is checked in by one of Mel's staff. But he's barely in the door before there's a problem. There's a lengthy delay of 10 minutes before he's shown to his room. <laughs> The plan to rebrand Windsor's as a guest house rather than a hotel now rests on the verdict of this one man. But has Mel done enough to win the vital four-star rating? Breakfast this morning, there was no side plate or knife, there's no butter. Oh, that's standard practice and unfortunately it didn't happen. And can she up her game to host a function for a group of VIPs? 
Shit, that's the wrong bloody Georgie. Fuck. The knife should always be on the right-hand side rather than on the left-hand side. I'm worried because often on these occasions, something goes wrong. For the past four months, Alex Polizzi has been trying to transform the fortunes of Windsor's in Chertsey and the attitude of its owner, Melanie White, who's fallen out of love with her job and her guests. If this all works out, then I think I might actually be able to check in almost any type of guest, from the tallest to the smallest to the shortest to the fattest. The exterior has had an injection of class and the bar a much-needed revamp, transforming it from dark and gloomy to light and roomy. The next stage of the hotel inspector's master plan is to get Windsor's its first ever star rating. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. But if it's going to pull the business back from the brink, only four stars or more will suffice. Last night, the official assessor arrived at Windsor's undercover. The check-in was far from faultless. If Mel's going to achieve the four stars she needs, the rest of the inspection will need to go more smoothly. You certainly can. Um, which room are you in? Right, which... the red room. Okay, the red room. Down the road, an anxious Alex waits to hear the news. I'm worried because often on these occasions, something goes wrong. It almost seems inevitable. Right, that comes £129.75p. Oh, they made it 133 Well, my maths must be wrong then. Oh, well, I... <sighs> really, it has to run like clockwork for her to get her four stars that we think that she deserves. There we go. Can I introduce myself properly? Yes, by all means. I'm from Quality and Tourism. Oh, right. I'm here to do your uh, assessment for oh, the star rating. Oh, you're very quick, aren't you? Uh, yeah. me. Let's just hope that the inspector wasn't a short, bald northerner. After scrutinising the hotel from top to bottom, the official assessor will now reveal his verdict. It's judgment time. So if I start with exterior, it's well presented, there's good clear signage, you know, um, I think it looks warm and welcoming as well. Public areas, um, the bar here, the dining room, beautifully decorated. Um, bedrooms overall, I think, to a very good standard. Service elements, there are some areas here that perhaps could be improved. On arrival, there was quite a delay, about probably 10, 12 minutes. So I think, you know, it needs to be organised. Mm -hmm. um, breakfast this morning, there was no side plate on, or, or knife, there's no butter. I think that should automatically mm -hmm. be there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's standard practice, and unfortunately, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. In terms of what you'd achieve in the hotel standard, probably would only be a one star. Guest accommodation. We're looking at four star for you, mm -hmm. which I think is which I think is great. Nice. Lovely. The official assessor is leaving Mel with four stars, a sign of quality and validation of 20 years' hard work. So, Mel, are you pleased? Um, yes, very, very pleased, actually. Yes, immensely pleased. <laughs> Proud, even. A four-star guest accommodation is good. Yeah, it's excellent. Much better than being a one-star hotel. Absolutely. And now that you've got this four-star rating, I want to challenge you to go out and actually contact some of the big national businesses who book rooms and invite them to come and see your product. I think we should throw a 21st birthday party for Windsor's. Yes. Yes? 21st birthday party? Excellent. I good! Everyone always wants another one of those. Those, they? <laughs> 21 again. But if those four stars are to prove instrumental in attracting new business, Alex wants Mel to get over her phobia and embrace new guests, whatever their size, shape or origin. Mel begins by hitting the phone. Shit, that's the wrong bloody Georgie. Fuck. <sighs> It's going straight to voicemail. With the phone a dead end, Mel's forced to be more proactive. In the drive to attract new business, Alex has told Mel to think big and think local. A lot of people don't even know we're here, so it'd be good just to kind of like go out and really sort of like spread the word a bit. Shepparton Film Studios is only three miles from Windsor's and home to a number of creative businesses that need rooms for their freelance staff. 
So if you'd like to come to that, that'd be great. And then you can see the rooms and everything. I'll try to look around. Fantastic. Get an idea okay. of what we do. Oh, hi. I was uh, looking for Paul. I'm Mel. Well, hi. Hi there. Closer still, an even bigger fish. Thorpe Park is one of the country's leading attractions with millions of visitors each year, a high proportion of whom want accommodation during their visit. Hi Penny, lovely to meet you. Hi. I'm Mel. Tomorrow we're having a party and um, if you could come down we could show you the rooms then. That would be fantastic. It's been a slog and a tired Mel can only hope that her hard work pays off. It's the big day and Alex is back to make sure it's a success. Good morning, Mel. Hello, Alex. How are you? Very well, thank you. So are you feeling positive so far? Yeah, incredibly positive. Good. There's only an hour to go. Is there something that I can do to help you? Um, you can help me light some nightlights. Lovely. Yep. It's a last-minute race to get the place spick and span for the select group of invited VIPs. Knife should always be on the right-hand side rather than on the left-hand side. Have we got, <laughs> did you get any ice? <laughs> Two forks here. Just stick some of this shit under the bar, I think. Looks good, darling. It does look good, doesn't it? Yeah. Right on cue, the select guests begin to descend on the bar. Come and talk to your guests. A few months ago, Mel could barely bring herself to check a guest in. Now, she has a room full of them. She's going to have to step out of her comfort zone and engage with them. With a fair bit of time just in case to make sure I could find it in three minutes. Thanks to the new signage, all the guests have arrived in good time, including the marketing manager for Thorpe Park. And Dan from Shepperton Studios. Really nice to meet you. Can I get you a drink? The new look bar is going down a treat. Everyone's enjoying the flowing wine and free food, but the frivolity has to translate into bookings. I think it's going very well. We've got a lot of people here. They all seem interested in what Mel's up to. I now just have to make sure that we get lots of people for you to see the rooms. Mel had lost confidence in showing guests around her personally decorated rooms. Now, Alex is asking her to face up to her fears and show them off to the VIPs. Then we go to the green room. It just feels like it's got a lot more character than a lot of places, so that's it's yeah. really, really nice. Mm. This is the yellow room. It's sort of more like a home than a, than a than hotel just a, room, isn't it? It's a place to sort of lay your head, yes. Mm. So here we have the red room. Cheryl? Oh, nice. Yeah, it feels quite like glam yeah. and sexy. Yeah. Yeah. sort of place you'd have a naughty anniversary, I think. I think there's been quite a few <laughs> naughty anniversaries in here. The bedrooms have proved a turn-on, but Mel needs them to turn a profit. What have you thought of the property now that you've had a look around it? Fantastic. We're thrilled to find somewhere on the doorstep that we didn't know existed, so it's perfect for us. I just want to book myself in at the moment, actually. Uh, it did seem pretty good from when I was looking around. The guests are impressed. Windsor's 21st birthday party has been a triumph. Are you happy with how today went? It's gone so well beyond my wildest dreams, really. I just feel much more confident about the whole thing now. I meet any American, any northern person, short, fat, bald, or so. <laughs> I don't care. I'm leaving Mel and Windsor's with an unusually warm glow in my heart. I really feel, most importantly, that we've given her back her love in her business. You can see from today, she's got a huge smile on her face, and that gives me enormous satisfaction. I feel really so much more positive than when we first started. I'm going to make it work no matter what. And no matter what it takes, we will still be here next year and hopefully we'll have five stars instead of four. Two months on, bookings are up by more than 100% and Mel has been turning guests away. But she's still standing up for Cushion's rights. Next time, it's old dogs and new tricks. It's like an old people's home. It looks less period than it does old-fashioned. Every single second of that was agony. We're very easy people. <laughs> oh, you are not.
This Sunday night, the boys and girls sang and danced their way through. Give it one last shot in the Don't Stop Believing live final. Meet them at 5.tv slash DSB and make sure you're watching Channel 5 Sunday at 5.30.